Welcome back again. Today we will be continuing with Linux Privileged Escalation Room. So, not much left to complete the room. Actually, in this video, we're going to go over task 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So, we still need one video to complete the room, which will be about the rest of the tasks. Now, for this one, let me start with task 14, and we will continue all the way to task 18. So, the first one is, as you can see, abusing shell features. Task 14 and task 15 are similar to each other, so if you perform one, you will be able to do the other one easily. And there are no required questions to answer, you just have to click on the complete uh, button. So, let's go over the first one and explain the concepts. So basically, uh, let me take this on the right, so this is our uh, command line. Now. In the last video, we saw that there was an executable file called suid environment2. Let me remind you of this file. So if you cd to, or without cd, let's ls-la user local bin. There was a file called suid environment, right? And if you run strings on suid environment, Strings. Oh, I have to define the full path since I am not on the directory. So let's take the full path slash suit environment. So remember that this executable was using the service to start the Apache server, but the flaw here was using the service without defining the full path. Therefore, uh, raising the possibility of exploiting or doing privilege escalation through exploiting environment variables. We saw how to do that in the last video before that one. Now, in this video, we will examine the suit environment too. So let's clear and try to run or run strings on this executable file user local bin suit environment 2. This time we see it is using the full absolute path of the executable which means there is no way we can do uh, environment variables exploitation to for a privilege escalation. So what we will do here then? Basically we will check out the bash version. So if we type bin bash dash dash version we see it is version 4.1.5. So basically, all bash versions lower than 4.2 are susceptible or vulnerable to some sort of, to, yeah, to, to vulnerabilities. Among these vulnerabilities is the ability to create shell functions. So basically, we can use the we can use the fact that bash is old here to create shell functions and then export the shell functions to replace the executable file we are trying to exploit here. Okay, so we can make an executable file called service that uses bash shell functions. And this is only achievable if the bash version is below 4.2. So let's go over the process of creating a shell function. The shell function will uh, just spawn uh, a shell under the root user. So basically, the first condition is that we have the bash version be lower than 4.2 and the second condition is that the user or the uh, executable file that we're trying to exploit has the suit bit set. If you have two of these conditions met, then we can do shell functions and use the shell functions to uh, escalate your privileges. So how to create a shell function or a bash function? So we can just issue the following command, function, and then we define the name of the uh, executable file that will uh, execute the function. So basically, since I would like to replace this one, I will use the same name, all right? And then we define the function by starting uh, braces, inside the braces, one space, so here we would like to put what we would like to execute basically with this function. So the function will execute simply bin bash, right? So bin bash. And we type dash p to preserve the permissions, right? Since the executable is run by root, 
we would like to, to spawn bin bash preserving the permissions. Okay, so we type dash p. And that's it. So that's the first step. So we have created the function now. Next we, next we need to export that one to replace the original one. So use the export. Dash f user. Uh, it was bin or s bin? Yeah, s bin. So s bin slash service. All right. Now let's try running the executable file. So let's take this one. And if we execute that, it should now pull up a bash shell. ID. And now you are the root user. So let's summarize. So we have an executable file that has the suit bit set and is run by root. We checked the bash version, it is lower than 4.15, uh, lower than 4.2, which means we can just pull up a shell function and export it to replace the binary uh, here so that we can gain root shell. Okay, that's the first one. Let's exit out of the shell here now and go to the next task. Next task we will examine history files. So basically, normally when you log in in any user, so say it's so root, you will be prompted to type the password. This password will not be visible in the history file. But if you type out passwords in the command prompt like that, all right, uh, in the, sorry, in the uh, command line, these passwords will be recorded in the history files. So it is a good idea to check the history files whenever you are conducting privilege escalation. There are high chances that these history files contain plain text passwords. So what do we do here? We try to pull up the contents of any file uh, named uh, history or does contain the word history in its name. So we type cat and then we define the directory. So let's say put this one and then dot we do put dot here because most probably all history files are hidden okay so we put dot here to indicate that we are trying to pull the history files that are hidden type star history so here we are instructing Linux to list out the contents of all the files alright all the hidden files that does contain the word history okay and then we type less just to not be overwhelmed with the contents of the file in case the files were you know big right so less let's see so these represent the commands that have been uh, executed on the command line so ls la cat bash history ls la you see here we have an attempt to connect to my sql server my sql dash h some host local dash u username root dash p password one two three all right, so since the user here made a mistake of typing the password in the command line, they didn't, they should have uh, just typed this command up until the root or the line where, it's, where it defines the user. Then they should type the password at the prompt. Typing in the password in the command line is the bad idea. So this is the password, as you can see. And then we have exit, cd temp, clear, fconfig, netstat, viewing the network activity, nano, Reviewing the VPN connections, ls, id, exit, identify, so that's it. So, what do, we, what do we do here? Let's see the question raised here. What is the full MySQL command the user executed? So, if we check it out here, this is the full MySQL command. This is the answer for the first one, but we're not finished yet. Let's try out this password. So quit su root. And now you are the root user. Okay, exit. So these are the history files. Other things to check out when you conduct privilege escalation is uh, the configuration files. Mostly configuration files could be web configuration, database configuration files, VPN configuration files. You want to check out these files because oftentimes developers or sys administrators would type plain text passwords into these files and they would forget to uh, secure these files with the proper permissions. So now you are a user. Okay. If any file or every configuration file 
contains plain text passwords, you would need to uh, prevent normal users like this one from reading out this file. So if you go to home user ls, we see there is a configuration file myvpn.openvpn. If we cat that file, let's see here. So in this line, you see it's using a file to perform the authentication. All right. Now this file uh, is a text file seems to contain authentication information. Now, yes, the MyOpenVPN does not write, uh, uh, outright contains any kind of plain text credentials, but it actually helps uh, any user to navigate through a file which contains the credentials. So in your case, you would either secure this file, prevent any user from reading it, or if that user must read the file, okay, you have some way to uh, prevent the user from reading out this file. So now we have a clue now where a credential or pair of credentials could be found. So cat paste so root password one two three. The question here is what file did you find the root user's credentials in? So simply we can copy this one, the full path of this file, and um, we just answer with it. Right. Last one is SSH keys. Let's examine this one. So basically, let's clear. All right. Now, this technique is common and popular among pen testers and security analysts. You know, they would just look for SSH keys of any privileged user, try to just extract the SSH key and log in offline. Oh yeah, log in from your machine to that user. So we try to do that now. If we ls, if we see you to that directory, we see there is a directory called. Uh, let's check here. If we do ls la, okay, we see there is an S hidden SSH directory. Normally, this hidden directory contains a private keys. All right. So since now, as you can see, the user, this one, has the ability to read. The contents of that directory what we can do now we can just cd to ssh and ls-la there is a key here called root key if we cut the root key see it is a private key file now technically you can use that private key file take it and just log in to the ssh to the uh, ssh of the root user before doing that Let's just formalize the keyword or the SSH key to be in good format. So we can type just SSH key format uh, check. Copy that. Put the private key, format the private key. All right. Now you have to, uh, let's see. Private key with header, private key with string format, copy the one with header. So copy that into, oh, yeah, into your machine. So nano, right, id rsa. Now we haven't, we already have enough a file in this name. So let's remove this one dash f id rsa nano id rsa paste the file uh, the key remember to adjust the permissions of the key search mode we already have the command popped up no nope. yeah so now try to log in with this one so ssh dash i id rsa root and just change the ip address Now you're logged in, see, id root. So what's what has gone wrong here? How to prevent this? The first thing, the directory, SSH directory should uh, not be accessible to any user, right? The flaw here is that the user, the regular user here, can access this directory or can at least list out the key 
the private key file. Suppose that you have adjusted the permissions of the directory and no one can read the root keys unless the or other unless the root user is able to read that. Suppose that you are you, you have performed the step and you secret the permissions. Still, there is a risk that the root key could be leaked. So what to do now, you have to prevent the root login. In SSH configuration, you can navigate to ssh.conf and don't permit root logins. Permitting root logins is a dangerous idea. It's a bad idea, actually, and dangerous. Yes, don't do it. So that was for today. In the next video, we will complete and wrap up the room with the uh, rest of the tasks we have nfs we have kernel exploit we have privilege escalation scripts so that was for today i hope you like that and see you in the next video